Hey everyone, Mean Chaki, Head of Growth here at InfoTrust. I want to just wish everyone a happy summer and of course with summer not only comes holiday vacations and summer block parties but also changes in measurement. And that's what I wanted to share with you all today are two big changes in the measurement world that I think may affect uh, a lot of our clients, partners, prospects, uh, and anyone that works in the analytics industry. So the first one specifically around mobile app measurement and particularly those organizations using Google Tag Manager. Now, uh, as you may have seen in the news, Google has been releasing and upgrading their mobile app measurement platform uh, centered around Firebase. Um, if you're using Firebase today or the latest and greatest Google Tag Manager containers, B5, then this update does not apply to you. But if you've been using Google Tag Manager for your mobile apps for a number of years now, you're likely using the older version of Google Tag Manager before that predates Firebase, or at least all the capabilities that Firebase has today, such as enhanced e-commerce and other tracking. But very recently, Google released some key dates over the next year of how they're going to be deprecating the older version of Google Tag Manager v4 uh, and encouraging all customers to move to GTM v5, which is the Firebase um, approach to measurement uh, within your mobile applications. Now, just to be clear, uh, this update and these dates that were shared do not force users to abandon Google Analytics for measuring their mobile applications. It's purely around how you collect data within your mobile app around Google Tag Manager. So Google Tag Manager v4 um, is the older version for iOS and Android, and you'll need to upgrade to GTM v5, which is powered by Firebase, creating new containers and deploying new SDKs within your mobile app, as well as migrating your in-app data layer, uh, which is tied to the GTMV4 approach, to a more Firebase approach with Firebase events and, and structured the data collection. Um, now the key dates to remember here is very soon you won't be able to even create the older version of GTM uh, containers, the V4, the non-Firebase or legacy versions. Uh, later this year, you won't be able to make updates within the pre-existing GTM v4 containers. And as of uh, early next year, uh, around March of 2020, you won't even be able to collect any data through the GTM v4 uh, containers and you'll be forced to migrate to GTM v5 and Firebase data collection. Now again, Google Analytics reporting will remain even through this migration. Uh, but if you have GTM v4 in your apps today, this could be a pretty significant project to undertake working with your mobile app developers, your IT team, but also your analytics and marketing teams that may be relying on this data just to have them know that the form of data collection will be migrating over. So you wanna be really careful with testing all the events, dimensions, attributes, uh, data collection you have today and make sure it works in the new version GTMV5 for Firebase. We have a, a little bit more information that we can share about that. Um, and if you're an existing client, you'll be getting some of this detail uh, here very shortly. Now, the second major update in measurement that we want to share um, that's pretty timely, it's also been very much in the news over the last year if you're in the analytics world, it's around ITP, the Intelligent Tracking Prevention Program and rollout that Safari and Apple have undergone over the last uh, year or so. Um, for those that don't know what ITP is, it's essentially a way that Apple is trying to protect its customers' privacy and consumer data as users are uh, utilizing the Safari browser across their devices. Um, and what it does, it controls how cookies are stored and their expirations when users are coming to websites via the Safari uh, browser. The latest um, update, which is 2.2, uh, basically changes how the cookies expiration works so that most first party cookies, not just third party cookies, only have a seven day window or expiration. Um, and even some have only a one day expiration depending on how you're actually setting them or how your tools and technologies are setting them on your website. Um, if you want more information about ITP and the different version releases, you can check out our website at infotrust.com. But really how this affects marketers and um, analytics in general for digital um, is quite significant. With cookies for the Safari browser having only a seven day or one day expiration window before they're deleted, that really modifies how user accounts, user metrics, and even attribution, retargeting, and marketing works um, online. And because it's only for the Safari browser today, but could be for more browsers later on, when looking at your data holistically, you need to keep that in mind and potentially shift your mindset from 
looking at all browsers and devices at the same time to start segmenting. However, if you're looking for a solution to try and maintain consistency between different browsers and the cookie expirations and ensuring attribution and multiple sessions from your users are, are tied together and Nuvers Returning maintains beyond seven or one day uh, expirations, then we have a solution for you. And that's what I wanted to share today. Um, there's been some releases every time ITP has an update on workarounds and none of them have really been stable. But now we have a, a really stable solution that uh, some of our partners and industry experts and internal teams have explored. Um, and that's around setting your cookies required for analytics, uh, such as for attribution or for user metrics, setting them through your own servers uh, so that a first party cookie comes from your website directly versus from a third party technology uh, or partner or vendor such as Google for Google Analytics. By setting your cookies through this server uh, approach, it appears like your website is the one setting the cookies, not a third party technology. And that actually allows it to uh, maintain expiration or, or duration beyond the seven day or one day that Apple enforces with its Safari browser. And the way um, we interpret Apple uh, allowing this is because if you're going through all that trouble with your own engineers, with your own servers to set these first party cookies in this way, you must really uh, uh, need them for your website functionality um, and, and for your users that are coming to your website. What they're trying to prevent are third party vendors or other technologies taking consumer data from websites through the use of cookies without the website owner's permission or the customer's permission directly. Um, this workaround involves some work on your servers, but also can leverage Google Cloud or uh, a few different steps along the process that we would be happy to share with you uh, further so that you can maintain how Safari tracks users and attribution the same as how other browsers uh, track it as well and really keep your measurement uniform uh, in this new world. So if you want more information, please reach out to us or we'll be sending that out to you if you're an existing client. Uh, but otherwise, those were the two big measurement updates for the summer of 2019. Um, if you have any more questions, check out our website, infotrust.com or feel free to reach out to any of us and we're happy to, uh, to share more detail. So thanks so much and happy analyzing.